quick review from yesterday. Um, we're doing transformations yesterday. Um, it's pretty much the same for any function, which is always going to be in this form. y equals 2 or f of x equals to a some function f bracket open k x minus d plus c. For example, you can have something like f of x is equals to negative 3 and then open a bracket, um, 4, open another bracket, x plus 5 to the power of 4 plus 7. Tell me what a, k, d, and c are. Actually, let's make your life difficult because that's how it's going to be, unfortunately. Okay, yeah, let's do this. Three of them are pretty obvious what they are. Only one of them, you're going to have to work for it. A is a vertical stretch and a reflection on the x-axis. Right, A is negative 3, so that's done. What is K? Um... Do I take it out of the bracket and then? Mm -hmm. So if you take it out of the bracket, one over three, what are you left with in this bracket? Um, X plus six. Nope. There's going to be an X. There's going to be a plus, but not six. How did you get x? You did this, right? You did the original 1 over 3x, and then you're taking out 1 over 3. So these guys canceled out, which gives you an x. Now you're going to do the same thing for the other term. You're going to do 3 divided by 1 third, right? Because you're taking out 1 third outside. What's 3 over 1 over 3, or 3 divided by 1 third? You multiply instead. Yeah, so what does that give you? Oh, nine. Nine, right? So what is K and what is D? K is negative nine. Nope. D is negative nine. Right? D is this number. You see three turned into oh. a nine. D would be negative. What is K? K is pretty obvious as well, okay? K is obvious. It's one, one third. Okay. But what does K do? That's the thing that's not obvious. What does K being one over three do to the function? It's a horizontal stretch. Yeah, exactly. By a factor of three, okay? K is you flip. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to write the letters, that, that's as you see it. But when you're describing the transformation, it's the opposite, okay? And C7 mm -hmm. goes seven units up, one and done, easy as that. And then you can always use the point mapping rule x over k plus d, a y plus c. The parent function was a parent function here. x to the power of four. Exactly. When x is negative one, y is one. When x is zero, y is zero. And then you plug that in there, plug that in there. We did this yesterday. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to a different topic, which is called polynomial division. Let's do a quick example. 3 into, I don't know, 2, 3, 8. We're just doing a normal division. 238, this is another way of saying 238 divided by 3 is what? Show your steps. Okay? We're going to need two things. We're going to need the quotient, which goes up top here. And then finally, we'll be left with some remainder. How do you do this division? Three goes into 23 seven times. Right. 21. And then in this long division, you always subtract. 23 minus 21 is a 2. And when you subtract, you're allowed to bring the other term down. How many times does 3 goes into 28? Yeah. 
Um, nine times. Exactly. Three times nine is 27. Again, you subtract the remainder is one, right? So therefore, mm -hmm. what we can say here on the side is that 79, 79 is equals to, not 79, well, what's in the thing? 238 is what we're looking for. 238 is equals to 3 times 79 plus 1. This is what you call your dividend, right? Whatever you're dividing. And whatever you're dividing from is called the divisor. This is your quotient, the thing that goes up top. And the thing on the side, the leftovers from last night's pizza party is the remainder. So those are some terms, right? Now we're going to do the same mm -hmm. thing, but now instead of doing it with numbers, we're going to be doing it with expressions. And I'm going to help you here because this is going to be something pretty new. It's, it's fun. So let's say we're trying to divide x squared plus 3x plus 5. This is going to be our dividend, right? We're trying to divide this by, let's say, x. Okay, and so the idea is the exact mm -hmm. same, right? Idea. What did you do here? You asked how many times does three goes into twenty three? Same thing here. How many times does x go into x squared? Two times. No, not two times. X times, because x times x is x squared, right? Mm -hmm. X times two would be two x. X times x is x squared. So how many times does x go into x squared? It goes into it x times, like that, right? Mm -hmm. So x times x is x squared, and you subtract it. And then you get a 0 here. And when you subtract it, you're allowed to bring the other guy down, right? So plus 3x. How many times does x go into 3x? Look at this if you want a hint. This is what you're trying to say earlier. There's 3x, exactly. So it's a plus 3, you put a plus 3 there, right? Mm -hmm. So x times 3 is 3x. You subtract this, and then you get the last guy, 5. Does x go into 5? No. No, it does not. So what does this mean for us? This means our dividend, look at this, our dividend, x squared plus 3x plus 5. This is equal to our divisor, which was x times our quotient, which was x plus 3. And then you have a remainder of 5 on the side here. OK? OK. But it does get difficult, right? It's always going to get more difficult. But that's the idea. If you understand that, you should be OK. But usually, when you divide, you're going to have to divide by multiple. Your, your divisor guy, last time it was x, it's never just going to be an x. It's going to be something like this. What is this thing called, this 3x3? What is this called? Um, a polynomial? That's a dividend, OK? Yeah, so it's, it's a polynomial, okay. but we're trying to, this is our big guy. We're trying to break this up, but that's our dividend. What is this called? The divisor, right? Whatever you're dividing mm -hmm. by is your divisor. So now we're going to set this up into our fancy little division bracket. We And then divisor is going to go in there. 3x cubed minus 5x squared minus 7x minus 1. Now, look at this. Our divisor has multiple terms. How does that change the process that we're looking at earlier? It doesn't change anything. Okay, It doesn't. You see this negative 3? Mm-hmm. It's not going to change much, but but it will change some things. The question you ask again is, you don't care about this negative 3 just yet. You ask yourself, how many times does x go into 3x cubed? Um, three x squared, okay? We're basically asking this, right? When we say how many times does x go into three x cubed, we're just dividing three x cubed by x. What is that? Use the idea of exponentials, right? See, you can ignore the three because there's just a number under, there's no number underneath that. You can just ignore the three. It's still gonna be three. What's x cubed over x? 
use the um, exponential rules. They have the same um, base of x, but they're being divided. What do we do? We subtract the subtract. Exactly. So 3x cubed over x is 3x squared. Okay. In other mm -hmm. words, how many times does x go into 3x cubed? It goes into it 3x squared times. All right. Okay. And now what do we do? Now in the next step, we're going to do 3x squared times x, which is going to be 3x cubed, right? But then mm -hmm. now notice there's a second term here. We have to do 3x squared times negative 3. What is 3x squared times negative 3? Three. 3x squared times negative 3. What is that? Um, negative 9x squared. Exactly. So we have negative 9x squared. All right. And when you get this, mm -hmm. you just subtract them. And remember, Whenever you're subtracting, the signs flip. So this one has a this one has an invisible sign, which means it's a plus. It's gonna minus anyways. But do you see this negative nine x squared? Mm -hmm. Whenever we subtract, the sign flips. For example, three x. We're trying to subtract three x minus two x plus three. Okay, you need to put this in a bracket. What you're actually doing is three x minus two x minus three because you need to multiply both of these terms by the negative sign. Whenever you're subtracting, the sign flips. So the plus 3x cubed, or the no sign means plus, that turned into a minus, and this negative is going to turn into a plus, OK? Mm -hmm. What is 3x cubed minus 3x cubed? Um, nothing. Nothing, 0. What is negative 5x squared plus 9x squared. Negative 5x squared plus 9x squared. Is it 10x to the power of 4? No. It is, again, they're like terms, OK? 5x squared plus 9x squared, they're like. It's basically asking you, if you have minus 5 apples, you add this with nine apples, how many apples do you have? You lost five yes. apples? Four, exactly, you have four apples. You have four x squared. Mm -hmm. X four, you would only get if you're trying to multiply x squared with x squared, which is not what we're trying to do here. The power is gonna stay the same. If you add or subtract, the power, the exponent itself, is gonna stay the same. It only changes if you multiply or divide. So negative 5x squared plus 9x squared is 4x squared. Now notice we mm -hmm. subtracted something. Whenever you subtract something, you're allowed to bring the other guy down. Minus 7x. There we go. Now we ask ourselves, how many times does x go into 4x squared? Basically saying, what's 4x squared over x? Like if you can also look at it this way, 4 over 1, x squared over x. 4 over 1 is a 4. What is x squared over x? Just x. Just x. So x goes into 4x squared 4x times. Right, you just divide mm -hmm. and use the exponent rules. Now, because there's two terms here, we're going to have to do this. 4x times x, what is that? 4x times x. 4x squared. Right, so that's going to come here. But then now there's a second term. What is 4x times negative 3? Negative 12x? Uh, yeah, negative 12x. And again, we know in a division we subtract. And whenever we subtract, the sign flips. So this one had a positive, so it's, that's going to become a negative. This one has a negative. You see this one is going to become a positive. Mm -hmm. okay. 4x squared and 4x squared cancels out because that's a 0. What is negative 7x plus 12x? Um, 
5x. Exactly, 5x. And since we cancel something, we're allowed to bring the last guy down minus 1. Now ask yourself, how many times does x go into 5x? 5 times? Exactly, and that's going to be the last piece of the puzzle. Plus 5, but then again, we're not quite done yet. Now we got to multiply them. we got to multiply the divisor with the number we put in here. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times negative 3 is minus 15, right? And then again, mm -hmm. we subtract for the last time. The signs flip. So this is going to become minus. This is going to become plus. 5x minus 5x is a 0. What is negative 1 plus 15? Negative 16. Try again. It is not negative 16. You lose one, you gain 15. How much do you have in total? 14. Yeah. And there we go. So therefore, we can just piece this up, okay? We can just piece this up. Our divisor, 3x squared minus 5x squared minus 7x minus 1. We can rewrite this as our divisor, x minus 3 times our quotient, 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. And then we add the remainder to the side like that. Just like how 11 is 2 times 5 plus 1. OK? Uh -huh. So that's how you do polynomial long division. It's OK if you don't quite get it. We're going to, you'll get it soon. This is the same, same kind of thing, right? We have our dividend on top. It's a, oh, by the way, this one, you have to put it in descending order. You know what descending means? What is descending? We have two types of orders here. We have either ascending or we have descending. Ascending means something like zero, one, two, three, four, from smallest to biggest, okay? And then the other is the opposite. The other is the opposite. But when we're talking about polynomials, we're talking about their degrees. So if you look at the numerator, which term has the highest degree? X4. X to the power of 4. Exactly. So that's going to come first, okay? Always in descending order. We're trying to do long division. And then we write the cube term here. Oh, and this, this one's a little bit tricky. We're missing a power. Notice how we're missing a power. Which power are we missing in the numerator? We have 4, we have 3. Which one are we missing? Two. Two, right? So here's here's another idea. The power is missing. You have to add a zero, like zero x squared. Oh, OK. Because if you don't, what ends up happening is that on the next step here, after the first bit, you end up subtracting a cubic and a squared term. And they're not like terms, so you can't subtract them. Mm -hmm. So you end up in this like loop where you can't go to the next step. So if a power is missing, doesn't matter if it's missing in the dividend or the divisor. If it's missing, you have to add a zero on that power. And then after this, we have a 5x. After this, we have a 3, OK? Mm -hmm. Same thing. The other guy, we're also going to write that in descending order. There we go. That's, this is our setup. And everything else is just as we did before. OK, now bear with me. How many times does x squared go into x4? And it is not 2x. Don't say 2x or 2. How many times does x squared go into x4? In other words, what is x4 over x squared? x squared? Exactly. Do you understand this? Uh -huh. x squared goes into x4 x squared times. It's like saying how many times does 2 goes into 6? Well, 3, because 2 times 3 is 6. x squared times x squared is x4. What's the next step? You multiply x squared with everything in your divisor. So let's do this one at a time. x squared times x squared. What's x squared times x squared? We just talked about this, right? What's x squared times x squared? Do you add the twos or multiply them? Uh, so we're multiplying two different exponents. You add the exponents. x to the power of 4. 
exactly, okay? What is x squared times 2x? Because that's going to be our next term here. x squared times 2x. Um, 2x to the power of 3. Exactly, that's right. 2x to the power of 3. What's x squared times 1? Well, that's just plus x squared. There we go. That's the next step. Once you figure out what this is, you multiply this with everything in your divisor, okay? Mm -hmm. And then what's the next step? Use your subtract. And then all the signs are going to change when you subtract. x4 minus x4 is nothing, zero. Ignore that. What is negative 2x cubed minus 2x cubed? Negative 4x cubed. Right, that's exactly right. Negative 4x cubed. And 0x squared minus x squared is negative x squared. Okay. And notice how we canceled out one of the x4s. We're allowed to bring the next guy down like this. Mm -hmm. Cool? Yeah. All right. The next step is now, again, you ask yourself, how many times does x squared go into negative 4x cubed? In other words, what is negative 4x cubed over x squared? Negative 4x. Exactly, negative 4x. And once you get this guy in the quotient, you need to multiply all the terms in there by negative 4x. Now, look at this. It's, it's easier than you think. Negative 4x times x squared is always going to be what we started off with. You see the first terms are always going to mm -hmm. be the same because that's how we got this to begin with. What is negative 4x times positive 2x? Negative 8x? Yes. Negative 8x squared. All right? When you multiply them, mm -hmm. you're going to add the exponents because there's x1 here, x1 here, negative 8x squared. And what's 1 times negative 4x? Well, that's simply minus 4x. Okay? And look at this. This thing, mm -hmm. now we subtract it, right? Now we subtract it. If we subtract it, this is going to become positive. This is going to cancel out. This is going to become positive. This is going to become positive. What is negative x squared plus 8x squared? I take away one apple, you get eight apples. How many apples do you have left? 7x squared. Yeah, exactly. So powers only change. Again, look at this. Powers will only change if you're multiplying. Like in this case, this mm -hmm. became negative x squared. Or when you're dividing it, that became negative 4x. When you're adding or subtracting, when you're adding or subtracting, the powers do not change. Okay? Okay. So negative 8x squared plus 8x squared becomes 7x squared. 5x plus 4x becomes 9x. Notice how we canceled out something here. That means we finally get to bring the last guy here, plus 3. Now again, last time for the last time. How many times does x squared go into 7x squared? How many times? Does uh, again, the question is, how many times does x squared go into 7x squared time? Okay. The trick is mm -hmm. to just do 7x squared over x squared. What's that? 7x squared over x squared. 1. I mean, x. 7. Right? Because look at 7. Yeah, because x squared and x squared, they cancel out. Right? If you have 7a uh, over a, the a's cancel out. Another way of looking at this is that you subtract the exponents. This is going to give you x to the power of 0, which is a 1. So that just disappears, OK? So okay. x squared goes into 7x squared seven times. And now for the final step, we just multiply this 7 with all three divisors. 7 times x squared is 7x squared. 7 times 2x is 14x. 
seven times one is a seven and you subtract this right? and again when you subtract it all the signs are going to flip so they all become negative seven x squared minus seven x squared is zero nine x minus 14 x negative five x three minus seven negative four and there we go we're done this is our quotient and this is our remainder okay mm -hmm. Okay, here we're going to do a couple of pop quizzes. How many times does 2x go into negative 8x4? Um. You're just trying to do negative 8x4 over 2x. Negative 4x to the power of 3. That is absolutely right. Okay. What is negative mm -hmm. 4x3 times 3x squared? Negative 3x to the power of 5? No, there is x power 5. But you also got to multiply the numbers now, right? Negative 4 times 3, negative 12. Okay. Do you understand these? Because these, mm -hmm. we, we're going to need them for every step of doing this long division. And that is, this last question that we did, that is as hard as it gets. It's not going to get harder than this. So if you understand that, right? If you understand that, you should be good. Let's keep going though. Like you need to be comfortable with this. It's a little bit tricky. It's it is tricky, but um if you know your exponent rules, it's not that bad. Let's do this. Again, you see this is not in descending order, right? Mm -hmm. So what should we write here? We're trying to set this up. x4 minus 2x to half 3. Yeah. What comes next? 0x to the power of 2. Exactly. Good. Good job. 0x to the power of 2. And then we have 13x and minus 6. And there we go. That's our setup. Now, from here, we ask ourselves, how many times does x go into x4? And it is not 3x. x to the power of 3. Exactly right, x to the power of 3, right? And once you get this, you're supposed to multiply both of them with x power 3, which goes in this step. So x power 3 times x is x4. x power 3 times positive 2 is positive 2x cubed, like that, OK? Mm -hmm. And then we subtract. Subtract means all the signs flip. x4 minus x4 is 0. Negative 2x cubed minus 2x cubed. What is this? Negative 2x cubed minus 2x. Now notice we're not multiplying them. We're subtracting double negatives. So the power is going to stay the same. What is that? Negative 4x cubed. Yeah, negative 4x cubed. And since we cancel something out initially, we're allowed to bring the second guy down. Okay. When it's a zero, mm -hmm. it's okay. We can work with that. And now we ask ourselves, how many times does x go into negative 4x cubed? Um, x to the power of 2. There is x to the power of 2, but there's something else as well. Asking, we're doing negative 4x3 over x. Negative 4x to the power of 2. That is right, negative 4x to the power of 2. And then we just multiply. Negative 4x to the power of 2 times x is going to be negative 4x to the power of 3. Negative 4x squared times negative 2 is negative 8x squared. OK, like that. And this mm -hmm. was a 0 here. And then we subtract means this cancels out, it's going to become a positive. 
And this is also going to become a positive, which gives us 8x squared. Since we canceled something out, we're allowed to bring the next guy down. Okay. How many times does x go into 8x squared? Um, 8x? That is absolutely right. So and then again, 8x times x is 8x squared. 8x times 2 is 16x, right? Mm -hmm. Subtracted, this cancels out 13x minus 16x is negative 3x. And then we finally bring the last guy down, negative 6. How many times does x go into negative 3x? Just negative three. Right, negative three. And then negative three times x is negative three x. Negative three times positive two is negative six, right? And when you go to subtract them, look at this. This is gonna become positive. This is gonna become positive. They both cancel out. Negative three x plus three x is nothing. It's a zero. What's negative six plus six? Zero. Zero, right? And now this question is asking us, determine whether this guy is a factor of this guy. Now look at this. Another way to look at this would be something like this. 2 into 11, right? 2 into 11, it's, well, 5 times. The remainder is 1. Is 2 a factor of 11? You know GCF stuff? Is 2 a factor of 11? A factor means it has to go into it exactly. You can't have any leftovers, you see? So no, two is not a factor of 11. Factor mm -hmm. means no no um, remainders, right? Uh -huh. Is three a factor of nine? Yes. Yes, is four a factor of 36? Yes. Yes, is four a factor of 37? No. Is X plus two a factor of this guy? Look at the remainder. It is? Exactly. It is a factor. OK? Mm -hmm. The remainder is a 0. It is a factor. If it's not 0, it's not a factor. Easy as that. But the main okay. idea here is like, this is very, very easy to mess up. Like, if you make one if sign mistake or something, then you might get a different result completely, right? Mm -hmm. so this is this is a very like precise, you have to be kind of like precise here. And there's a lot of little exponent rule things going on and adding and subtracting going on. So you kind of have to, that's why we're doing this now because um, we did the easier things before, right? We, we kind of built our base. And you see, this is one application of this. Like, why did we do this to begin with like a couple of months ago? Because we can do this. Now, why are we doing this now? And then we're going to see that later. So everything has a purpose. We're going to build and build. And it, usually the purpose is going to be something in real life. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you one quick example of what this could be. Because when you factor something, right? When you factor something, it gives you the x-intercepts, right? It gives you the x-intercepts. So let's say, assume, let's assume this is the model of a dolphin coming in and out of water, right? In and out of water. So we know it's a positive quartic polynomial, right? Like that. Mm -hmm. So we want to kind of know, well, when does it come out of water? How far apart does it come out of water? On the x-axis, we have time. So we can ignore this. Now look at this. By factoring it, we can find the first x-intercept. We can find the second x-intercept. And we can kind of build from this. We know how far away it is, right? Maybe we're trying to mm -hmm. add, add a tag to it, or maybe we're trying to tag, track it, track the population, yada, yada. So once we know how far apart it comes out of the water, we can kind of track it better. Right? So that could be mm -hmm. a potential real life application of something that started out with what's x squared over x. OK. All right, now it's, it's, it's uh, going to call this, we're going to name this something. Um, all right, I'm going to name this collab time. Let's see. Now I'm going to need you to work on this. I'm going to give you the the question, OK? And you're going to give me the answer. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. uh, wait a second, wait a second. I don't think you can see what I wrote. Can you see this? Yes. 
All right, so here, let me give you a question. Okay, let me give you a question and you're gonna be doing this, cool? Mm -hmm. So let me set this up. I need to use a Zoom pen, I'm using my other pen. All right, so it's gonna look something like this. So we have 2x squared or 2x cubed plus five, what's the issue with this? Maybe I need to make this full screen. Um, okay, let's retry that. 2x squared plus, yeah, 5x squared minus 4x minus 5. And our divisor is 2x plus 1. Right, why don't you try doing this? The goal is to find the quotient and to find the remainder. There's no tricks here. There's no missing X's. We're just trying to find the quotient and we'll find the remainder. How do we start? Um. You're gonna write it. Give me something up top. Here's where you'd start. You need to put something up there. And what you put up there is how many times does 2x go into 2x cubed? No? What is 2x cubed over 2x? No, there's no 2 here. x squared is right, but there's no 2 here. Because the 2s, they cancel out, yeah? Look at this, the two cancels mm -hmm. out and x cubed over x is x squared. What's the next step? The next step, you're gonna write something here. Do I multiply? Yeah, you multiply, square? exactly. You multiply both, the, 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 both of these guys by x squared. So what is 2x times x squared? Well, we already knew this, right? Um, it's 2x cubed. 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. So that's going to be the... Where write it? Uh, you'll write it right here. Okay, what's the next term? There's one more term on that line that we need to write. Right, that's good. And now we subtract. From what? Um, so we will subtract two X, like just we'll subtract this, right? Mm -hmm. And then we also subtract these guys. Okay. So I can put a minus sign here. I can again the signs flip. Yeah, you put a minus sign here. What is two x cubed minus two x cubed? Well, that cancels out completely. You can ignore this, right? Then the next step would be here. What is five x squared minus x squared? Do I just write five? Again, five X squared, yeah. Five apples you have, you give away one apple. How many apples? Four. Four, so where do you write four X squared? Directly underneath that X squared, okay? It's right, right here, you write four X squared, yeah. It's okay, you should write it. I'm not gonna write it, you, you do this. 
Okay, yeah, sorry. Okay. Let's start next there. And when you kill something off, by kill I mean like we cancel some things out, you're allowed to bring the next guy over, whatever. We already dealt with the 5x square term. The next thing we're gonna bring the negative 4x down. Yes. Now ask yourself, how many times does 2x go into 4x squared? How many times does 2x go into 4x squared? And you write that right here. Sorry, not there, up, up here. 2x into 4x squared up here. Is it just 2x? It is 2x, exactly, but it's plus 2x. So x squared plus 2x up there. Right, now what do you write underneath the 4x squared minus 4x? Now we need to write something here, right? You just multiply 2x with our divisor. And that's gonna go underneath 4x squared minus 4x. And then you wanna do uh, one times two X also goes there next to the four X squared. Yeah, good. Now we subtract. You're supposed to flip the signs on like the bottom one? Yeah, both of them, exactly. On the bottom one, both of them. So what do you get on the next step? No, no, no. So 4x squared minus 4x squared is a zero, okay? The, the first term always cancels out. Is 4x squared, we had a 4x squared on the bottom, we change it to a minus, you see this always cancels out, so you can ignore that. But then the negative 4x minus 2x doesn't cancel out, what is that? Negative 4x minus 2x is gonna go right there. Negative six, it's gonna become, okay? We're, we're, we're subtracting. You lose two apples and then you lose two more. So negative six X. And now we subtracted four X squared. We're finally allowed to bring the minus five down there. Yes, how many times does two X go into negative six X? Uh, well, you need to put something up here first, right? How many times does 2x go into negative 6x? You put that up here first. Is it negative 3x? Mm, 2x times negative 3x would be negative 6x squared. We're just trying to find negative six X over two X. Look at this, the X's cancel out. Negative six over two is negative three. So you just put a negative three up there. Okay, 
Okay, and now you multiply negative three with your divisor, put it on this line. Okay, and then you subtract them. When you subtract them, both of the bottom ones, or only the bottom one, their signs flip. Yeah. So what's the last step here? What is our remainder? So negative 6x plus 6x is, no, again, see, you're making the same mistake. Negative 6x plus 6x, what is that? You had, you lose six apples, but, but you gained six apples. First you lost six, and then you gained six. You have zero apples, okay? Negative 6x plus 6x is zero. It is a zero. So you put a zero there, or you just cancel it. You don't have to put a zero. And then negative five plus three, what's that? Negative five plus three. Okay, negative five plus three. Negative five plus three is certainly not negative eight. Negative five plus three. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yay, we got it. Now tell me, is this a factor? 2x plus 1, is that a factor of our guy that we started off with? No. No, it is not. How do you know? Because there's a remainder. There's a remainder. That's absolutely right. All right, let's go back to where is my book? Let's go back to this guy. I'm gonna show you as as hard as it gets, right? Like it's 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 the same type of idea, honestly. Like, um, uh, which one looks difficult? Okay, this one has two missing. Notice this one, our dividend, x five guy, right? The dividend is always gonna be um the higher power or whatever comes first, right? This is always gonna be our div dividend. It's missing two different powers. What is it missing? Three and two. Yeah, so we're gonna have to introduce three and two. So this thing is gonna get pretty long. But it again, we're just adding and subtracting exponents or adding and subtracting like terms. The math here isn't hard. It's like it just have to be a little bit more precise. That's the issue. Because all we'll be doing is we'll be either doing like 3x4 over x, what is that? Or 3x4 over 2, what is that? That's just 3 over 2x3. This is one type of math we'll be doing. The other type is what's negative 3x squared minus 8x squared, which is negative 11x squared. The math, there's only two types of maths here. Okay, either mm -hmm. we add or subtract exponents, or which is basically saying you divide or multiply the variables, or you add and subtract the variables. There's just two things. How many times does x4 go into x5? x times? Exactly. So x4 times x is x5. But then when you do this, right, when you do this, you have to multiply all the terms in the divisor by the thing you just wrote. So x4 times x is x5 plus. What's x3 times x? x4. Yeah. And then you kind of keep going, right? And x2 times mm -hmm. x is x3. x times x is x squared. Negative 2 times x is minus 2x. And now all the signs flip. So this is going to become a negative. Well, we know this is going to cancel out. So you can just ignore this one. 
This is going to become negative. This is going to become negative, negative. This is going to become positive. What is 4x4 minus x4? Four x four minus x four. Just four. You have four apples. You lose one apple. Three x four. Yeah. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. How we got three? It's not going to be one, right? Because again, when we're adding or subtracting, the the exponent doesn't change. It's still gonna, you're still gonna have an x4 or you're gonna have a zero like here when you're adding or subtracting. The only thing that mm -hmm. differs is the coefficient. What is zero x3 minus x3? Negative one x3. Yeah, exactly, negative x3. Same thing here, x squared minus x squared is negative x squared. Nine x plus two x, what is that? Nine x plus two x. Eleven x. Yeah, eleven x. And notice how we subtracted something here, like we cancel this out, right? This thing is always, mm -hmm. always going to cancel out. We're allowed to bring the next guy down, so plus eight. Now tell me, how many times does x four go into three x four? Three x. In other words. What is 3x4 over x4? Just 3. Just 3, right? Just 3, so plus 3. And then we multiply everything here with a 3. So 3 times 3x4 three is 3x4. Three, 3 times x3 is plus 3x3. Three three. And then you kind of just keep going here. Plus 3x minus 6. And then we always know this one cancels out. And then mm -hmm. we change the sign of everything else here. What is negative x cubed minus 3x cubed? What do we get here? Negative x cubed minus 3x cubed. You lost one apple, right? Again, where's the subtract? We're not multiplying here. You lost one apple and then you lost three more apples. How many apples do you have? Negative 4x cubed. Yeah, negative 4x cubed. Same thing here. You lost one apple, and then you lost three more. Negative 4x squared. You had 11 apples. You are subtracting three. You have eight apples. And eight plus six is 14. Now, does x4 go into negative 4x3? That's like saying, does 4 go into 2? No. No, it does not. The higher degree is like the four, okay? X4 is bigger than X3, so you stop right there. In this case, this entire thing is your remainder because you can't go any f forward, right? Because we're, mm -hmm. we're trying to put X4 into X3. It doesn't go. You can't put four into two, right? Four times nothing, well, whole number wise, four times nothing is a two, same idea here. And that's going to be our remainder. And our quotient is just this innocent looking X plus three. Okay. Okay. Fun? A little. Right, let's do one more. Um, which one looks tricky? I'm trying to think. They all they're all kind of the same, honestly. Like um. All right, so look at this. Is there anything missing? Mm -hmm. Ask it. Step one, ask yourself if when it's in descending order, is anything missing? No, that's not. All the powers are accounted for. What about on the divisor side? Is anything missing here? Another x. Yeah, exactly. So this becomes x squared plus 0x plus 7. So if it's missing, you have to add a 0. It doesn't matter which side it's on, right? How mm -hmm. many times does x squared go into x4? x squared. Yeah, x squared. So x squared times x squared is x4. x squared times 0 is just plus 0x cubed. x squared times 7 is plus 7x squared. Then you flip the signs. Well, 0x cubed, you can just ignore it. And then this becomes minus. 
So 3x cubed minus 0x cubed is just 3x cubed. Negative 2x squared minus 7x squared is negative 9x squared. We cancel something out. We're allowed to bring the next guy down. How many times does x squared go into 3x cubed? Um, 3x. That is right. There we go. That's the one I hear. 3x. And then you just do 3x times x squared, 3x cubed, 3x times 0x. Well, that's going to be x 0x squared. And then 3x times 7 is 21x. This always cancels out. 0x squared, you can ignore this because adding and subtracting 0 is no difference. This is the only thing that flips sign. Negative 9x squared minus 0 is just negative 9x squared. 5x minus 21 is negative 16x. And then you finally bring the minus 1 down. How many times does x squared go into negative 9x squared? Negative 9x. Negative 9x. Negative 9x. Mm, are you sure? Negative 9x squared over x squared. Is that negative 9x? No. What is it actually? Negative 9, right? See, these cancels out completely. x squared uh -huh. over x squared is a 1, so you just put a negative 9 there. Negative 9 times that is going to be negative 9x squared minus 0x minus 63. This cancels out. This changes sign, this changes sign. Negative 16 plus 0 is negative 16x still, plus 63. There we go. That is our remainder. That is our quotient. That is our divisor. And this big thing, this big fella here was our dividend. OK? Mm -hmm. And that's the first step. I guess this this is the most important part, like being able to break down the polynomials. What we'll strictly be looking at is when the remainder is zero next time, OK? Because when it's mm -hmm. zero, it's, it's way easier to work with. If there's a remainder, it's not like it's a little bit trickier. But to get to that step, we're going to start off with the big guy. And then the remainder will eventually turn up to be zero. All right, let's, that's it for this week. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.